So how much that he loves you? How much does God love you? Yeah, I took dogs up here and I had a lot of mixed emotions today. Right? How much does he love you? Will you sacrifice yourself that much for your loved ones? Aren't you love him that he's having to do the And that's how we treat him. You and I put him there. You and I slash him. Put on the cross. We took a little, the reason why we're here, the reason why we have our faith. He had to be crucified to save us all. But a lot of us question, a lot of us doubt. In Luke 23, 39, 43, it says that one of the criminals hung him. Hunger heard insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you're under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he says to Jesus, Remember me? When you come into your kingdom, Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus, Jesus will go for pay. You see, all the criminals that sit were crucified right next to Jesus. They are the three. Which one are you? We deserve to be on that cross. But we are we insult Jesus. They pay high is so you could do the Messiah, that is to 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 protect to to be the one for us. Could you want you? Why don't you bring us down this from this cross? And every day we say we, we we question, we insult, we throw all these jabs at Jesus. Asking him why. Or are you that one that says, Jesus, you did nothing wrong. I'm up here for a reason. My sins are just. And I deserve to die. Go be all the learn. They don't chill all this time. Instead of praising, thanking, loving God. And loving what he did for us with his son Jesus, we insult him. We question him. And we sit here sometimes and go, well, we I'm a good person. Good John. I haven't sinned at all. Which what you eat me. Do you have But who are I learned this from the event we went to last week, and he says, What makes you good? Is it because you compare yourself to your neighbor? Which I guess I got young. Because we could be sorry to do it, not get shy. Oh, no, 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 are you judging? Are you good? I'm well. I'm perfect. So which means I don't need Jesus. It says who has sinned. But Scripture says all have sinned. It doesn't say oh, yeah that person is pretty good. So I, I'm gonna let that person slide. I once learned this thing where 
28% of basic exchange in our salvation to make it to heaven. So you guys come to me and say, well, I'm a 100% good. How do you be 100% good? Even the perfect person still needs at least that 1%, and that 1% is Jesus Christ. If you're a murderer, and you do all the stuff that you say you be top of the list of sinful things, you still need 99% of Jesus. Everyone in life is missing that percentage point, which Jesus feels. Jesus makes you whole. Are you good? And in whose eyes are you looking yourself to? Jesus, God says we are all sinners. So in God's eyes, we are no good. Because in Romans 3, 23, 25 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all just justified freely by His grace through the redemption of Christ. All have sinned. Sometimes we come to church and just I'm lonely. Oh, yeah, you know, I have a soul all the time, so all the time. Just like a kid, right? If you tell your kid he's always in trouble, all the time, all the time, he stops listening. It's like, well, if I'm getting trouble, maybe I'm going to keep on doing it. So you keep telling your kid, don't do that, it's bad. And they do it anyways. You guys come to church, God says it's bad. You do it anyways. We all are here for this. In John 19.30, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave him his spirit. So as Jesus died on the cross, so does our sin. If we believe and have faith in who Jesus is. He gave up his life so that we can have a life. Will you be willing to die for your husband, your wife, your kids? Will you take that beating for your loved one? God loved us that much. He sent his son for us. You know, we're talking about we're going through a lot of emotions today. How could, you, how could God love me, you, any of us that much? But he does. And so emotions roll, run down your face. Because when you feel that love that God has for you, that he sacrificed it all for you. How can you not feel that emotion and that love? So as Jesus died, what gives us justification for his death on the cross is that three days later, he rose again. He buried all our sins and he rose again. In Luke 24, 4 through 6. While they were wondering, wondering, about, wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that glimmed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces into the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Jesus rose from the grave to complete our salvation, to justify us. He has ever, ever really read this deeply and, and wondering, 
Let's break this scripture down. Key thing in there, it says, why do we look for the living among the dead? Why do we look for the living among the dead? In life here, we look for all these things to satisfy us. Well, if I have this brand new car, I'm living life. I have this mansion, I'm living life. I have anything you can think of, and it's living life. But we know at the end of the day, that life brings death. To it says there's stories riches in heaven, not on earth. But yeah, we store everything we want on earth and forget that heaven awaits us. So why do we keep looking for the why do we could keep looking for the living among the dead? Jesus, you just show them. Let me tell you, like I said, why we at the funeral, why we come to a funeral? We should celebrate, enjoy, accept, have faith that Jesus is the Come celebrate what He has done for you on the cross. Let me tell all this stuff to come satisfy our needs, to satisfy our life. But we end up going to a dead end and, and die there. There's no path. He is among us. There's a story I heard, and you know we all know that a lot of people play sports and stuff that the church, the main, the championship, right? The church, Super Bowl rings to um, you know NBA final stuff. And that's all they. they they, they shoot for That's their career dream. So when the tennis player, there's, if you guys know tennis, tennis, my more local tournament that is the top tournaments. Those four majors are, you're going to the top tennis players and you have to win at least one of those to, to be considered great. So the blow up tournament, they do tennis players, they will be like, oh, she gave me. And then you know, he keeps searching, so every time he gets, he gets close, get close, and she hears me. Finally, he breaks through, and he wins that one major championship. He yanks the door, he's you know, crying, jumping for joy, all that, and then as it subsides, he, he looks back and goes, that is it. That's all I get. It wasn't until he found Jesus Christ that he knew that, you know what? All the accolades I get on earth means absolutely nothing. It's why I have in heaven that will be seen. He shoot his whole life to get this championship and he finally gets it. And then he goes, oh, that's it. He was still missing that hole. He was still missing Jesus. He was still missing the love that God has given to him. So we sit here and we chase our dreams, our goals. We chase all this stuff. If you don't have Jesus in your life and accept that Jesus as your Savior, at the end of the day, you will be disappointed. Because nothing in life will ever be good enough. Money can buy a lot of things, but can never buy a pathway to heaven. We live in the world for greed, for envy. We go to work, we have, a, we have people that work for us go, why do they make 10 times more than I do? I do the exact same thing as they do. Because we are greedy, we are greedy, we are envious, jealous. He doesn't deserve, he doesn't deserve that. I work more than him. I work harder than him. But Jesus says, you know what? Come as you are. Rich, poor, doesn't matter. You guys are all the same and equal in my eyes. 
She is a good shoulder. He is risen. He is why we're here today. But a lot of us in here look at where, like Thomas. They both Thomas, one of the disciples. So he reaches out and touches Jesus. And then he believed. A lot of us in this room, a lot of Christians, have faith, but have this thing in back of the mind I want to touch Jesus. Who's not gone again? To know that it's real. But you have the thoughts on him there. Do we do we talk? Got a tongue long, got a tongue there. Jesus, the God Lord. When you wait for that day to say, I want to touch you, Jesus, it may be too late. He has already returned to bring his chosen one, chosen one home. We are here because he is risen. This little widow that we saw, he was beaten, bruised, put the crown on, to justify, to put our sins upon that cross. If you have not yet accepted Jesus, why he has waited, what he has waited for? He has come to church every single Sunday to fed the word of God. But yet he has cannot accept Jesus. What is missing? He laid the foundation right upon us. He was crucified for us. But yet you still don't believe. We are all sinners, no matter how perfect you may think you are. And that's why Jesus is here. So in close, I want you to think of this. I have two cups here. It's a hot cup because I went there, so I just grabbed it. But let's just get happy. I have two cups here. What do we use these cups for? Alright, drink. It says caution is hot, so hot beverage. But what do you put inside of this cup? One cup has all the sins of this world. You drink every day. You keep drinking and you keep drinking and you keep drinking. What do you feel you come with? They both look exactly the same. No one knows what's in, no one knows what's inside of it but me. I could pass my sin on. I could pass all this on. Nobody knows what's inside. You have the other cup. Feel grace, love from Jesus Christ. Which cup do you drink? Which cup do you fill yourself with? We come to church every single Sunday. We fill our cups every single day. But when we get home, we mix it with all these other things. We get fed the word of God, it gets poured in there. Then we go home, we pour lust, we pour filth, we pour all these sins onto top of what we just have heard when we drink what is out there in this world. And Jesus says, I come, God sent Jesus for us. Pour it all out. Pour his love onto this cup. But yet we reject, we refuse to drink it. We refuse to accept it. We refuse it. Because our cup is better. So who called in the Luden Hall? Jesus did a more to a nail. Who called the new home? We all look the same. It's identical. But we don't know what's inside of it. What's inside of you? What's inside your cup? 
what is it that you do? We are filled with the Holy Spirit. We're filled because Jesus Christ died for us. He's poured all His love upon us. So the day we come, we worship Him. On a day like Easter, it should not just be today, but it's every single day. So in Romans 4, 25, it says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. So what are you waiting for? To call to the Lunar Hope. Jesus to loot, or the day the sins of this world through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today.